General Attlee, Prime Minister of our first post-war Labour government, born the son of a Putney solicitor in the last years of the 19th century, was educated at Halebury and Oxford. Trained in the professional caste, Clement Attlee soon turned away to social work in London's slums. In fact, his chief concern was social welfare. Nineteen fourteen, and Clement Attlee went to war. Afterwards, he became mayor of Stepney before entering Parliament as Labour member for Limehouse. Hard to see in this homely figure a man who had twice become his country's prime minister, but his mildness concealed an almost ruthless determination. Following World War Two, he shared in the victory over Nazism together with his king and Winston Churchill, to whom he'd been deputy PM during the conflict. It was in the ensuing years of peace that he came to lead the nation as head of the Labour Party. Attlee, the statesman, meeting and dealing with men of the caliber of America's Harry S. Truman and Russia's Joseph Stalin, the Potsdam Conference. Something on the lighter side and needed after the years of strain, the Festival of Britain. Too much austerity sparked Labour's chances of another term in office and Mr. Attlee left 10 Downing Street. To sum him up is not easy because he'd always been such a reticent man. A barrister who thought deeply, he was wise, persistent and quietly courageous. He was given the Order of Merit, an earldom and made a Knight of the Garter. Here he advises those who were to follow him. Clement Attlee was never unduly conscious of the honours he received. Perhaps the final accolade describes him best, companion of honour. That's really just what he was, companion of honour to the country he so steadfastly served.